Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Wednesday morning, December 15th, halfway through the month, 2021, the man they call me dead, the gentleman squire, Matthew Thomas, the M-O-T-S, the Mots, the Matthew of the uh, Serengeti. Good morning, Matthew. Yes, good morning. Well, when I'm in Serengeti, I am definitely the Matthew of uh, the Serengeti, but right now I'm, I'm actually the Matthew of the Christmas season, meathead. There you go. You know what's, uh, I just realized what it's being the 15th. We're 10 days from Christmas. Yes. We're I should probably days. stop my, start my Christmas shopping. We're, we're 10 days from Christmas. And although we are still technically about a week or so away from the official start of winter, I guess we can say winter is coming, right? Winter is coming tonight on TNG. We'll get to that in just a bit, but first off, let's uh, let's talk about the sponsor who takes care of us. And before you do that, you know, I whispered into uh, everyone's ear again, but I was really talking to Uncle Al. I know that we're going to try to get that Linda K. personal line of clothing, the tearaway pants, you know, because nothing better than Linda K. ripping her pants off. But we're trying to get that White Castle t-shirt. But Matthew, what are we talking about? Well, any pants are technically tearaway pants if you just pull hard enough. But you're talking about collar and elbow. <laughs> there was a weekend once I pulled too hard. You're talking about collar and elbow brand apparel. And if winter is in fact coming, you need to make sure you are clothed appropriately. And there's no better Wait, How did you know that her name was Winter that weekend? Never mind. Uh, hey, you know, I know a lot about you. You know, I am your uh, your biographer. So, I mean, I know. You're things. my shaman. Uh, you know, I'm something. But I do know that you can save money if you enter promo code Linda K L I N D A K A Y. Save yourself 10% on your collar and elbow purchase. All right. A little bit of news here. Uh, Christopher Daniels. There's an article out there that and I just it's, it reads like fake news to me. It reads like this. The headline says Christopher Daniels on his AEW status in in-ring future. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Christopher Daniels is fucking retired. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you not pay attention to the draft last year? Christopher Daniels is done. <laughs> Oh, there was quite a bit of controversy. Was he, was he, ret no, no, he wasn't retired, right? Isn't that what he said on air? He wasn't no, no. retired. What happened was, let's re-explain it. Uh, Drew Baydala thought he was retired, tried to make a pickup. He wasn't retired. In fact, had wrestled more matches, told us on the video that the man they called Meathead won the draft, then lost his match with Kaz, and then was officially retired. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess the last we saw of Christopher Daniels in uh, AEW was was that match where he was bleeding like a stuck pig, right? Was yeah, that his he last beat appearance? Up bad. And then he oh, came out next week and uh, said goodbye. Here's yeah. the thing I did not know, which uh, we read in this article here: Daniels, comma, who also works as head of talent relations for AEW. Ha ha! Yeah. Did not know. No, that was the first I had heard of that uh, either. That's that's news that's breaking to me as well, too. Uh, well, that's that's good. I mean, I think that's a good fit for him. Quote, the last match I had for AEW television was the night that we wrestled against the Bucks. And unfortunately, we lost and SCU had to split up, he said. Since that time, I've been sort of weighing my future in the ring. And I decided that I still wanted to give wrestling in the ring a go. Honestly, I would be lying if I said I was happy going to AEW and not seeing my name on the board. I want to get back in the ring and do something with this roster, unquote. Interesting. Uh, he might have a few more in the tank. Might have a few more in the tank, but yeah, uh, his last match was with the Bucks and he got busted up there. So, Christopher Daniels, the fallen angel. You know what I was watching yesterday? Uh, on an unrelated note, wink, wink. Uh, I happen to be watching some videos of a gentleman that had a costume on, uh, had some black hair hanging on the back of his mask. He was hot, he was spicy, and he tasted great. Um, I was on a run of Curry Man matches. Well, that's great because, I mean, with him being head of talent relations, he can also, you know, act as a, a liaison to your mass wrestlers. You know what? And maybe he could bring in because, uh, you know, the last time we saw Curry Head, or Curry Man, we haven't seen Curry <laughs> Head in a long, long time. Where is Curry Head? He's probably still in that ring uh, chasing down Daniel Bryan. <laughs> But the last time we saw Curry Man, uh, he was uh, backstage at Impact, and he said he had just came back from Japan defending the Fired Championship. Oh, my goodness. How you long know, has I, that been? I don't know, but he needs, I think he needs an AEW run. He's hot. He's spicy. He tastes great. Konnichiwa. Yeah, I miss Curry Man. 
and you can't you cannot tell me that is not perfect for like an entrant in an AE double a AEW battle royal or something. I One mean, of those casino battle royals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He ends up as the uh, the spicy Jack. The, the spicy Jack. Wow, I'm ready. Let's do it. Hey, let's talk AEW real quick before we get into NXT from last night. You know, winter's coming, and it's coming tonight. And Tony Khan has hinted at more arrivals over the next few weeks. Matthew, we speculated a couple weeks ago because uh, winter's coming is the debut of Sting and. It was the title change where Kenny Omega defeated John Moxley for the AEW Championship. Is something going to happen tonight? Are we going to see a debut? I think so. I mean, it's only one year down the road, but I think now, I mean, last year, Sting. What a debut, whole new company, by the way, a year later. Yeah. Winner's coming. It's associated with a big event, it's associated with a big arrival. And you got to think they've got multiple people on deck so i think it just makes sense that you uh you break at least one person out tonight is it Wyndham rotunda that's probably the biggest name they could debut i think uh i think there's a strong possibility secondly is the no compete contract uh no compete clause cleared for keith lee Hmm. because that's who it needs to be yeah yeah, I mean, I think whoever whoever it is, it's going to be they're going to they're going to present it in a way where it's going to be a big deal. And we're going to be talking about it uh, with a lot of enthusiasm tomorrow. My main question, though, is was the snow just stings thing or is whoever debuts at winter is coming? Whoever debuts, they get the snow. Does that come with the package? I think the snow was stings because it went with his uh, video package after. Yeah, but, but so here's the thing. I think winter's coming. It's kind of like AEW. Actually, it's you know, no maybe related to Tony Schiavone. I don't it's, know. Kind, it's kind of uh, it's kind of uh, their king of the ring, where whoever is they revealed that winter is coming gets the snow for a little while. And as part of your parting package, you also get a <laughs> snow entrance. <Dun-dun-dun. laughs> hey, I think it'll work. All right, so um. I mean, they've got upcoming events, Holiday Bash, New Year's Smash, Battle of the Belts. I mean, you know, they've named a lot of their TV shows, so they're all big events, right? Yeah, and my goodness, what the AEW does. Don't forget, they're going to be leaving TNT in just a little bit, and Dynamite's going to be heading to TBS. They do a great job, uh, you know, of making each event feel special, but uh, each show feels special but my goodness i mean i think what you're really seeing here is a company that's running more or less four pay-per-views a year and you've got the week-to-week booking of the cards where okay you know what you're gonna get the cards announced for dynamite it's announced for uh rampage but you've got these i mean they're they're in the the token of like your clash of the champions these super cards on yeah. their uh, their TV, they start booking you know weeks in advance, and that's what we've got tonight. All right, let's talk NXT from last night. Uh, the show opens up with the video package of uh, Grayson Waller yelling, "He's done! He's finished!" Uh, the beatdown of Johnny Gargano from last week. He is, um, you know, I don't know why, but there was a tent full of about nineteen people mm-hmm. yelling at Grayson Waller as he walked in the building. Yeah. Yep. They I don't understand sure. it. So, take away from a lot of NXT last night, but specifically as it pertains to Waller, it felt as non-organic and contrived, contrived as, good word. A, as I've seen a wrestling show and wrestling angles in a long time. You, you know, Waller, who we saw basically several weeks ago, was battling L.A. Knight over who yeah. was going to be the host of, of uh, yeah, Halloween Havoc in the vampire uniform. They they are really trying to make it known this guy is a heel. This guy has heat because all these people are accosting him when he's getting out of his car, and it yeah. just feels so absolutely forced when you really have not been conditioned to take this guy seriously in the weeks leading up to this. I mean, that was the guy who was supposed to get the heat from the Gargano beatdown. 
And my goodness, it just does not feel like it meshes. Nope. Opening match, it's uh, Cameron Grimes and Duke Hudson. And, uh, you know, they've done this thing where over the last handful of weeks, this NXT 2.0 group have gotten over on a lot of the black and gold people. One of the new ones that has not gotten over on anybody is Duke Cusson. Cameron yeah. Grimes beat him again and stripped him bald, ripped his hair out of his head. So what I was thinking when I was watching this is, you know, what two great talents there are in the ring and how great this presentation would be if this was back in the traditional NXT and you were not having this whole angle where, oh, Duke Hudson's mad at him because he beat him in the poker room. The initial Duke Hudson we got in that tournament where he was, you know, just really – he didn't have a gimmick or anything, right. but he just came across great with the promo and came across with all this charisma in ring before they decided to say, oh, he's got to be the poker player guy, and we've got to have – backstage segments and we've got to have a, a poker tournament in ring you know if you just let these two guys work a match over a feud for for whatever reason but you know with all this extra pomp and circumstance it was a, a really solid match um it, it was a vicious chair spot that grimes took yeah, if you didn't catch part, this they just had to have the pinfall in the ring yeah but it just uh it, it there's just so many layers that were unneeded in this match that you've got in, in NXT 2.0. Again, stripped bald, basically ripped his uh, Kurt Angle headgear and wig off. He's bald. He's straight up shaven clean bald. So here's the thing. He got shaved last week or the week before, right? Two weeks ago? It was at the pay-per-view, right? Okay, so at least 10 days. That head has been recently shaved as of last yeah. night. Yeah, and I mean, it wasn't shaved down to that level when right. he got shaved at the pay-per-view. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's There's no sense to it. You know what I mean? All right, let's talk about uh, what's going on with the Shaman. Are you enjoying the Shaman? I enjoyed it last week. Last night felt a little bit much. I mean, where you have to hold down the fanny pack, you know, to get the gimmicks out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was an interesting reveal last week, but I just it felt like it was uh, it felt like it was reaching a little bit last night. All right. I know I jumped over, but I, I wanted to get the shaman talk in there again. We've got Matt Riddle now three times last week. We got him back to back nights this week. And who's to say he's not on SmackDown is WWE over force feeding us Matt Riddle. I don't think they're over force feeding this riddle. I think they're just stretching everybody as far as they can stretch and uh, not to go too in depth on raw a few nights ago, but I think that raw was beneficial for the booking of Bobby Lashley and probably another future title reign of I mean, Bobby, face Lashley. Bobby Lashley face Bobby Lashley. Absolutely. But at the same time, yeah, you did a really good job of getting him over but you had him in three matches, not you had him in more segments, you know, the opening segment, you had some backstage segment, what, five or six segments, but it's, it's, a, it's what we're seeing WWE doing. It's, they are that thin in the roster and they've and got they're that thin intentionally. They did it to themselves yeah. and they've got that much TV time to cover. They made themselves that thin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Grayson Waller coming to the ring. Um, you know, you said contrived. I'm going to say just forced. I'm yeah. going to say words like, um, you know, derivative. I mean, it's – he comes out. He's got the – again, you know, I don't mean to slam the universal crowd, but he's got the universal crowd chanting that he's, an, you know, an a-hole. Yeah. It is – and then to get the real heat, you know, because he's a true 2021 heel, starts talking about Wade Barrett. And Vic Joseph at the commentary table. Whoop you know, you you know what uh what also occurred to me, you know, during this segment, and it really it kind of changed the perception of the show after this. Is I mean, is quintessentially is the crowd of work there? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to put anything out there in this NXT universe. And see if this is getting over or if it's not getting over because you've got such a small, you know, most likely repeat crowd there 
week to week. I mean, they're they they could quintessentially flash up. You know, and, and think about this. You go back to the the chase section there. You know, I mean, you could quintessentially you know flash up applause, boo, yay. Remember, you know, folks, like the, I've said it multiple times. AEW records and broadcasts their wrestling program, yeah. whereas WWE has a television show that features wrestling. This yeah, is a television show in a television studio. And, I mean, quintessentially, you could make the same case for the black and gold, but you, it didn't feel like it does now. Black and gold, I I believe, and I'll say this again, there was wrestling fans there. I don't know that there's wrestling fans in this building. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it, it it and not to take anything away from the talent or or anything, but the the presentation with the colors and the audience. This is going to sound maybe overly negative, but it reminds me of like a studio children's game show or something. Yeah. You know, oh, you know what it could have been? It did feel a little bit like Stanley Spadelsky's Funhouse. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what I was gonna say, it, dude. It's time for the Warriors. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly. Well, you what got the kid is. over in the oatmeal looking for the marble. Oh my goodness, it's Funhouse. It is. So let me let me let me go back. Let me tell you a little bit about I'm Funhouse, just, uh, Matthew. I, I want to pump the brakes here. I'm just glad you got the reference. Thank you. So I was devastated as a kid because you had your standard Funhouse. <laughs> and then at some point they were setting up, they were building like this super duper fun house, yada, yada, yada. And I think what I didn't realize as a kid, they were taking it away to a different network or they were changing the syndicated partners or whatever. So when they went to the super fun house, I didn't get it, you know, and this was back, this predated us having satellite or cable or anything so this was standard network tv when they took regular fun house to super fun house we no longer got fun house and I, I was not happy about that for a while i feel like i just gave you credit for knowing the reference and i feel like you don't have it now it might be a different fun house <laughs> do you know who stanley spadowski is uh i assume he was a dude who coasted fun house no clubhouse i was wrong when i said fun house stanley oh. spadowski's clubhouse Okay, well, you need do some research on Funhouse because that does remind me of Funhouse. The dude who hosted Funhouse, um, blonde hair, uh, that really narrows it down. But yeah, Funhouse probably. Yeah, you're talking about real life. I'm talking about something inside of a movie. Oh, um, okay. Well, that was. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Stanley Spadowski played by Michael Richards. Do you know who Michael Richards is? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not getting the reference. Kramer. Though. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Weird Al Yankovic made one movie called UHF. Mm -hmm. And in it, Michael Richards played, you know, Stanley Spadowski, and he had his own, um, like, kid show on uh, UHF. You know, and I they think had the, uh, the, kids the drinking from the fire hose. <laughs> the take-home yeah, lesson is I you're think, way I think, off on it. I think bo both of us could be right. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, folks that don't know what I'm talking about. Deep dive UHF. For those that, you know, have seen UHF and thought that Matthew and I were on the same page, you're like, wait a minute, meathead. He's no, 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 no. We know what you're talking about. And Matthew's talking about the clubhouse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stuff. Well, you know what? Also research Funhouse, late 80s to early 90s, um, late afternoon game show. Yeah. Research that. I think I think what you're going to find is that we're both wrong. All right, Funhouse, yeah, Fun. Well, I mean, not 2019 movie Funhouse, but Funhouse. We'll we'll take a look at that. Let's get back into NXT from last night. Man, now you got me wanting to go look for the marble and the oatmeal. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Ivy Nile taking on Mari Miller. I love Ivy Nile. You know, I love the uh, Diamond Mind, and I think she's got a great look. So Ivy Nile, a big star. Yeah, this match was a little more competitive than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a squash match, but um, got a few more minutes than I thought it would. But no, she definitely uh, comes across great. Joe Gacy helps in the debut of Harlan taking on Guru Raj. Uh, Harlan destroyed him and destroyed uh, security and chucked him down the stairs. Yeah, uh, the only concern here is I hope we don't just have Joe Gacy as a mouthpiece. I think there's yeah, let Joe wrestle too. Yeah, an exponential level of talent there. So uh, I want to see him continue to wrestle. 
Cora Jade taking on Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai mad that Cora Jade called her mom. <laughs> That's NXT 2.0. You know, you got 18 year old wrestlers calling, you know, 30 something year old wrestlers mom. So, but uh, Cora Jade wrestling Dakota Kai and the winner, Cora Jade, after the bell, you know, she celebrates and then Mandy Rose attacks. So, yeah. Mandy did a really good job on commentary here. Um, you know, Mandy Rose is, is, as many things as NXT 2.0 was throwing at you on a weekly basis, let's not forget, you know, the reinvention of Mandy Rose. And I think it's been a very uh, it's been a very worthwhile endeavor. Hey, uh, backstage, Grayson Waller walking around when Tiffany Stratton walks past and says, my daddy thinks Waller's a terrible person. And then Waller just laughs it off. And then Eero Shirai approaches Waller, yells at him in Japanese. Shirai walks off and Waller says he thinks she likes him. Um that's just not working for me. Tony D'Angelo and, and or Andre Chase holding um, <laughs> holding Pete Dunn's mouthpiece as a trophy. Again, this is very reminiscent of NXT 2.0 booking. We start the show with uh, with Duke Hudson is feuding with Cameron Grimes because he beat him in poker, and now we're going to have Pete Dunn uh, feuding with. Uh, feuding with him because he stole his mouthpiece. Like you are uh, again. So we opened the show with the, the chance of, of asshole, asshole. We get right. language here and there, but there's so many segments on the show on a weekly basis that makes it feel like my Water first down. rest, like my first wrestling program, like WWE junior, like very, very rudimentary elementary storylines for children. Yep. Jacket time, take on the Grizzled Young Veterans. And uh, back on break, and Grayson Waller is outside LA Knight's Red Corvette. By the way, I love that Red Corvette. It looks like a woman is in there. Is that is that uh, the girl? I mean, is she back there? I don't there? know. Did, did he kidnap a woman? Like that, no, that she was, was the, sitting there calmly. She was sitting there calmly, but, I mean, like, you know, so we're to believe that, that Grayson Waller just attacked uh, – attacked LA night and left him for whatever. Yeah, left him laid out. And I think he yeah. took her with him. So he gets she, the looked, she looked almost too still. Like she looked sedate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, Braun Breaker and Roderick Strong. Uh, Roderick Strong, the North American, or excuse me, the Cruiserweight champion. Braun Breaker destroyed him. Braun Breaker Bron with the win. Braun Breaker, an absolute stud. And he beat him. He beat him. Uh, very definitively here in the middle of the ring. I mean, you can say what you will. I mean, the NXT 2.0 color scheme, Braun Breaker's color scheme, you can say this is a show that is made to get that guy over. I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, but, you know, I, every the more I see of Braun Breaker, uh, the more I think we got something really special here. After the match, Grandpa Champa coming after Braun Breaker. But uh, the NXT title is the war. Champa raises the belt as the uh, show goes off the air. Yeah. You know, I, we're going to get a rematch between these two guys. Maybe it was a little too quick to pull the trigger in the last match they had. But I, and I I'm think, fine with that. Yeah, the more you're seeing Breaker, I think the more people are going to accept the fact that he's going to be Champa when it happens. And that he's um, top tier. I mean, yeah. literally, the more you see Breaker – the more you realize that this guy is going to win. He's Absolutely. going to be champion. He's built like a champion. Absolutely. You know, and he's somebody that I think you're going to see at the top of the card in the main roster um, in the not too distant future. Fair enough. All right, Matthew Thomas, tonight you say it could be uh, Wyndham Rotunda. I say it could be Keith Lee. I say winter's coming. And tonight I want your predictions. Brian Danielson, Hangman Adam Page. Who's winning? Hangman's not losing this quick. Now, Hangman retains. I got to agree. Um, any interference? Any debuts during that match? Oh, my goodness. It's it's very... It's very possible. You, you know, what we've thrown out there a couple of times, and I still would not be... Would not be disappointed if Rotunda aligns with the Dark Order in some capacity. We've and been I throwing that out there for a year. Yeah, now, and but I, right. I under and I understand that probably means Page losing. Um, but 
no, I, I, I don't know. I think that, here's the thing. AEW does a very, very good job on clean finishes and I don't see them, you know, muddying the waters with something that would in possibly don't putting interfere. sports entertainment over the finish. Yeah. In, in that match. So if you do get somebody going after Danielson, somebody going after page, I think it happens after the match. Well, it won't be page page because she's on her honeymoon now with diamond Dallas page. Oh, oh, uh, I must have missed that bit of news. That was in yesterday's news. DDP got married, and her name is Paige Page now. Oh, that's awesome. That, but but not the not the former WWE Page. No, 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 no. All right. For Matthew Thomas, the man that called me, that we will talk to you tomorrow morning about everything AEW and Winter will have already came and went, and we'll break it down for you right here. So long, everyone.